Good evening. I'm Julie Dubalak, Director of CYO Athletics for the Diocese of Toledo. I would like to thank you for joining us this evening virtually to help us celebrate the 2020 CYO All Sports Mass. Since 1996, CYO athletes have physically gathered together to celebrate this Mass and to thank God for the gifts He has given all of us prior to the start of a CYO fall season. We usually do this dressed in different, uni different colored uniforms, representing several different sports and from a variety of parishes in the main church of Rosary Cathedral. Due to the restraints of COVID-19, tonight a few of us are gathered in the chapel of Rosary Cathedral, and we are so very grateful for the ability to live stream this Mass to all of you. Her faith is the basis for the CYO Athletic Program, and this evening we are giving witness to that faith and celebrating what makes our athletic league different from most. Thank you for participating. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. What a joy this evening to join all of our student athletes, the CYO members, our families, and coaches, and all who assist in the CYO program, as we do each year, and this year, on this feast of St. Peter Claver a great missionary servant of the gospel and of Christ Jesus. As we prepare to offer this Mass, let's pray in a particular way for our young people so that together they might have the spiritual health to strengthen them in every way during these days. 
Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who made St. Peter Claver a slave of slaves and strengthened him with wonderful charity and patience as he came to their help, grant through his intercession that seeking the things of Jesus Christ, we may love our neighbor in deeds and in truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by all, shown to be a letter of Christ administered by us, written not in ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets that are hearts of flesh. Such confidence we have through Christ toward God, not that of ourselves we are qualified to take credit for anything as coming from us, rather our qualification comes from God who has indeed qualified us as ministers of a new covenant, not of letter, but of spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. be to God.
be a living letter of Christ Jesus. Dear friends, this evening, in the second reading, we heard from the letter, the second letter that St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, people whom he himself worked to convert. And in this, we hear that he's saying, but do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation? Now, I'm sure some of us might say that when somebody tries to get on a team, oftentimes it's required that they have a letter of recommendation from their doctor, understandably. We know that often, if someone is excellent at a sport, in order perhaps to take the next step, maybe getting a scholarship to high school or to college, they often need a letter of recommendation from their coach to support who they are and how great they are as athletes. This evening, St. Paul is wondering why anyone would need any kind of physical letter to send, to testify to them, because what he tells them is, you are the living letter. A letter, he says, written on our hearts, known and read by everyone who sees and hears you. Not on tablets of stone or on papyrus or paper, but instead, letters written on hearts of flesh. This evening we come, of course, virtually in this live streaming mass, and I'm so grateful for so many who are participating. And it seems as so many things in these months to be strange to us. Normally at this time, gathered in our cathedral with so many of our athletes and coaches and families, we could certainly talk about healthy competition, where we strive to help each other to be better, even in a competitive way. We might talk about on a team healthy banter back and forth between teammates. We might even talk about the need for the physical health to play that sport or participate in that sport that I am part of in CYO. But this year, it seems that it's more a step back about physical health in a world of a pandemic. Certainly, we're concerned about physical health. Sadly, that's why we're not all here in the cathedral this evening. But most of all, as every year, most of all, are we concerned in beginning this athletic year, certainly recommending healthy banter, certainly recommending healthy competition, certainly recommending healthy sportsmanlike conduct, certainly dependent on being physically healthy, but in particular, focusing on our spiritual health. So that if we are in a good relationship with Jesus and his church, then we'll be spiritually healthy enough so that people will not need some physical letter of introduction to who Jesus is. They'll just need you and me. Living letters of Jesus as his faithful disciples. The saint the church celebrates today, St. Peter Claver, was an extraordinary missionary, a Jesuit who said from the beginning he wanted to offer himself for people's salvation. And then he decided that once he arrived in the place of his destination, he wanted to serve most of all those who were slaves and be good and charitable and kind to them bringing them medicine and food and comfort spiritually and physically. In fact, he told those who worked with him, it's more important first to give them our hands 
than before we give any words. No need for a physical letter if we're literally being Jesus for all whom we meet. So in this rather unique opening mass of the athletic year for CYO, to all of you, our young people, our athletes, families, coaches, staffs, I invite you to concentrate on the most important health, spiritual health, so that you might be living letters of Jesus on and off the field, on and off the court, on and off the track. Living letters who because they come to Sunday Mass, they go to regular confession, they try to lead good lives. They're obedient to Christ and his church. Living letters who become shining examples of discipleship so that others might recognize who he is and might know Jesus so they too can live him in their lives. Be living letters for Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, let us now humbly beseech God through the intercession of St. Peter Claver, that he may hear our prayers which we present. And let our response this evening be, hear us and help us always to do good. For Francis our Pope, Daniel our Bishop, and all the clergy, that they may be living examples of Christ the Good Shepherd to the flock, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us and help us always to do good. For those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us and help us always to do good. For all athletes and coaches, that in these unique times they may be kept safe and promote goodwill and fair play in their competitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us and help us always to do good. For all those affected by the current pandemic, that they may be strengthened by our support and comforted by our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us and help us always to do good. For all of us, that we may not weary in doing good, and so reap a harvest of joy and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, us and help us always to do good. For all who have died, especially coaches, teachers, and our family members, that they may receive the reward of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, us and help us always to do good. Heavenly Father, we sing your praises without ceasing. You rule over all things with wonderful order. You temper the cares and burdens of our toil, and by giving us rest and healthy recreation, you refresh our weary bodies and minds. Bless these coaches and athletes who participate in CYO athletics that they may be renewed in spirit and strengthened in mind and body, 
May all who meet on the field of competition find the enrichment of companionship, that together they may offer you the praise that is your due. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people, and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity may, by the example of blessed Peter Claver, be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the festival of St. Peter Claver, you bid your church rejoice. So too, you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more he gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Daniel our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. <coughs>
Let us pray. Having fed upon the delights of the sacrament of salvation, O Lord, we humbly implore your faithful love, that imitating by your grace the charity of blessed Peter Claver, we may also be partakers with him in glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. What a blessing to celebrate this CYO Mass with all of our CYO family together. Special thanks to Julie Dubalak, to Jack and Kathy of our CYO office, to Father Smith, who is our CYO chaplain, and to all of you for participating in this Mass this evening. I pray that you'll have healthy banter, healthy competition, and physical health, but most of all, that you'll concentrate on being spiritually healthy so that you might be, as St. Paul said, living letters of Jesus. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Turn the hearts of your people always to you, O Lord, we pray. And as you give them the help of such a great patron as this, grant also the unfailing help of your protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.